Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion, uh, we mentioned about the ways of cultural research uh, in terms of the ethnographic study and looking at folk and minor art from a purely ethnographic uh, perspective. Uh, that included the need for explanation and uh, also creating a framework with the uh, multiple building blocks and also providing its uh, researchers and the researched and the people who are the beneficiaries of uh, this kind of studies with a right guideline for doing research and getting benefited from it uh, in the aspect of cultural study. But the discussion are based on various sources and resources that are available and what all it includes in it. Uh, and finally, uh, this is also a realization perhaps that the general philosophy behind it is uh, highly pluralist in nature, uh, that it involves a mixed method, uh, which is also an uh, eclectic approach at that uh, content uh, in, in its uh, contextual uh, core that uh, one cannot conduct this kind of a study with uh, some restricted and fixed uh, methods. Like if we feel that uh, the imperial research from direct experience is not sufficient because the quality of imperialism is also uh, changing because the empirical qualities uh, that is very direct and observation best, the observation is also uh, prone to face the bias of the changing time. So, from that perspective, the empirical changes in culture and society on leaving human subjects and uh, also secondarily uh, that can be you know inviting uh, the same human subjects to refer on how they live through uh, the ages and makes sense to such changes. And these are the things that we found from Macrobie's writing from 1997 uh, uh, onwards. So, that is a comparatively new study, but it also has its limitation, it, it does not uh, uh, include everything there. And uh, also, the three years method that we discussed that is very basic and all including. At the same time, it is restricted. So, uh, there are a few other contradictions that comes uh, into this context that is based on the research experience, which came to be uh, characterized and uh, stimulated uh, and also uh, they are illuminated uh, with the outcome that is connected to the narrative quality that we discussed in our previous lecture. From there, we are again looking at the exponents who realized certain facts and uh, went into the study in this topic with uh, utter conviction. So, to begin with, I must uh, also go back and look at the, uh, the, the findings from uh, infrequent texts do not uh, suffice anything. Uh, the thorough recognition of each individual from the beginning of 20th century who has realized the significance appeared the aesthetic content and contributed to the growth of practice through worthwhile research and duly supported the tradition of Indian folk painting to bring it to the uh, present form and it is it, under a lot of uh, global uh, limelight. And that is the most important thing, it could not have been better. So, uh, art and cultural historian namely E. B. Havel, uh, Okakura, Kumar Swami, 
Sister Nivedita, Stella Cambridge, the social worker like Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay, uh, her greatest contribution is has to be remembered as she is the pioneer reformer to introduce cooperative politics to cultural upliftment in the craft sector in post independent India. She is the one to revive the weaving tradition in the post colonial uh, time as a post colonial cultural policy and it was not easy for her to fight for it. Uh, the situation was not favor, she did it with uh, some help of the present uh, Prime Minister of India Jawaharlal Nehru, but he also had his priorities and that was a time when uh, it was not part of the priority of the uh, fledgling nation who have just experienced the taste of independence and there are uh, policies that are also uh, directed towards immediacy of generating revenues because the country uh, was not economically uh, in a very good position and it was very important to go to the basic necessities. So, instead of uh, looking at the uh, richness of craft, it was very important for the people to look at the basic food, health, education and Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay and many other at that time, but she was uh, the pioneering guiding light for many. She simply realized that uh, it is a time when the priorities are different, but soon uh, the country, the nation will uh, make up for their basic necessities and that by that time, these things will be lost forever. So, she could not wait for it and she uh, did her best to at least keep it going and because of her uh, perhaps that many of the weaving traditions of Eastern India that is still surviving and also she moved to the southern part of India and she constantly worked on the Indian textile for so long. So, she is a very important name in this category uh, and she is important for our study because she is the one who is a visionary who could understand all these things from a research perspective. So, she could analyze the situation and then again she put the narration in her way, she builded up the story of from future to present to uh, again going back to the past and then that made her uh, vision for the future much more relevant and with that uh, we are the one who is getting benefited and we can understand how India has then coped up with the economic upheaval and uh, also this is also for true that it was a basic turmoil that took place in the uh, pre-colonial and of course, the immediate post-colonial era, but through uh, Indian art and craft and also for the ethnic culture. Uh, India could uh, generate a lot of revenue and uh, it is still uh, working as a strength for us to uh, better revenue generation if we pick up the right policy and uh, go in the right direction. But these are the matter that is part of the government policies, the policies are often uh, made properly, but they are not in proper hand, they are not uh, utilized or underutilized, the funds are not properly distributed. And there are many other factors which is quite, uh, it is though not uh, expected, but it is common for a country with such a huge population. Uh, but uh, uh, this is also true that these are the people who showed us the path and then we went by that. And then I mentioned the names of uh, B. R. Ambedkar, Mahatma Gandhi, Guru Shadadat, anthropologist. G. S. Gore, uh, also the artist, poet and writer Ravindranath Tagore, Abhinandranath Tagore, Nandilal Bose, Jamini Rai, Sunayani Devi and uh, also the uh, their acts of nationalist spirit uh, that, that was to build up the spirit of nationalism through art and culture echoed William Morris and Okakura's initiations respectively in England and Japan. In Japan, Okakura built up uh, a cultural center called Nippon Bejetsway 
and that is one place where uh, Japanese culture was revived. Even now, when we look at the Far Eastern culture, we feel that there there is a highly uh, uh, foreign um, influence that has taken place and they are mostly American. But uh, this is very interesting to see how uh, Okakura tried to revive the culture and Tagore and Shantani Ketan tried to follow the same policy. And then by the publication of K. G. Subramaniam, we are highly dependent on his writing and his views on uh, this uh, cultural studies, his opinions, uh, sometimes we are, uh, we can just uh, take blindly, but uh, even if we analyze them, we feel that uh, it is very on time and it has a sense of liberation that has, uh, that, that is working as a guiding factor. Jyotindra Jain, Komal Kothari, J. Swaminathan, uh, Tapati Goha Thakurta and uh, Parthamita. Popul Jaikar, Bhaskar Kulkarni and Mulkaraj Anand are the names that maybe I am taking randomly because they belong to different time and uh, they are the people who belong to different ages. But I took their name together because they are the same uh, visionaries who helped uh, this particular um, area of research uh, in their own ways, they are the one to show us light and they have worked extensively in this direction. Uh, Jyotindra Jain was instrumental in finding out people from different traditions and also uh, he investigated uh, how uh, those people are carrying it farther. Uh, he also worked extensively on a contemporary folk painter who revived the urban folk art of Kalighat Pata uh, and the artist is Kalam Patua and the work is uh, highly um, en enriching for us and uh, most of the writings of Mulkaraj Anand and his initiatives are, uh, he, he did it like his work is spreaded all throughout. We must also remember how Popul Jaikar and uh, Bhaskar Kulkarni uh, visited Madhubani during the time of famine and uh, it was a paradigm shift of the same medium that was uh, basically initiated by the two uh, and there had been other people also with them. Uh, so, all these exponents are um, very important and we must also study their writings to understand how they visioned uh, this entire happening and that can work. Uh, as a guiding factor for us. So, we must not forget their contributions and not only forgetting, but we must do a thorough research into that to understand uh, what should be the states next. So, with that we are finishing our third module uh, and going to the fourth uh, module to see the different zones and uh, getting a first hand experience of how it is happening uh, today. Uh, it is more like experiencing a living tradition through images and information.